Hello again and welcome back to the Day of Daily Bible Study. We're continuing on with the Gospel according to Mark. We are in chapter 13. We're we'll starting in verse 14. Uh, before, let's pray. Uh, loving God, um, apocalyptic writing is so foreign to our way of thinking. Um, and so, Lord, it's hard for us to read it. Lord, help us to understand even a glimpse of what you were saying to your people. Help us to take what we need to know and apply it in our lives today. Lord, we ask you to be with us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I mentioned yesterday that this chapter has been known as the Little Apocalypse. Uh, so, so to be clear, Apocalypse um, uh, just means uh, revelation. You know, the, the, the Greek name for the book of Revelation is Apocalypsis. And this idea is this uncovering of things. And it's a fascinating um, name to describe apocalyptic literature because uh, it's so much of apocalyptic literature is opaque. And um, so I want to give a little bit of this background before we go further on this. Um, there are uh, snippets of apocalyptic writing throughout the Old Testament and throughout the New Testament, um, but the overwhelmingly largest chunks of what we call apocalyptic writing as a genre are in the second half of the book of Daniel and the entirety of the book of Revelation. I mean, again, it's Revelation that gives the name for apocalyptic literature. And the idea is that uh, apocalyptic literature is trying to write about, um, usually, it's the present and the very near future. Um, there are probably moments throughout uh, these apocalyptic literature where, and we today think of apocalyptic literature as being the far-flung future. Um, but at the time, it was almost certainly written with the mindset of, I'm explaining today and the very near future. And part of the reason why for that is because, um, is because the nature of how it's being written. And it's being written in, you hate to call it this because it gets, it makes it seem more dramatic than it is, uh, a certain kind of code. And I don't mean a code like, you know, here's a secret, like, like from the Da Vinci Code or whatever. What I mean by that is that um, you know we live in a world that has a freedom of speech, and in a world, in our, at least in our in our nation, um, and so long as the freedom of speech is actually being honored throughout American context, um, then then there should never ever ever be a need for apocalyptic literature to arise, because generally speaking, the reason why you write in this kind of secret writing is because you want to say something that will be obvious to the people you want to understand it and opaque. And, un and not understandable to anybody you don't want to understand it. And unfortunately, since we were not first century uh, Jewish Christians, uh, we're part of that group of people who wouldn't necessarily understand it immediately. So I say all that to say that there's kind of this wink going on in the middle of all this saying, you know, you know what we're saying. And the fact of the matter is, uh, unless we've really dug into it, we, we don't. <laughs> and we need to, to remember, keep that in mind. So we continue on here. And, and Jesus continues to speak. And he says, but when you see the abomination of desolation standing where it should not be, let the reader understand then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains. The one who is on the housetop must not go down or go into, uh, get anything out of the house. And the one who is in the field must not turn back to get his coat. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. But pray that it may not happen in the winter. For those days will be a time of tribulation such as has not occurred since the beginning of the creation which God created until now and never will. Unless the Lord had shortened those days, no life would have been saved. But for the sake of the elect whom he chose, he shortened the days. And then if anyone says to you, behold, here is the Christ, or behold, he is there, do not believe him. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and show signs and wonders in order to lead astray, if possible, the elect. But take heed, return, behold, I have told you everything in advance. So th again, the part of the thing is when we read this, it is easy for us to think he's speaking in advance. Therefore, he's speaking in advance for us. Therefore, he must have been talking about something that was at least 2,000 years in the future. And I'm not trying to say that there aren't echoes of this, like we talked about yesterday, that do play a role in our lives and in the future. But we need to remember that part of the reason why this was written down, part of the reason why this was preserved and, and communicated to the people is because many of the things, people saw what Jesus had talked about as happening right then. So uh, part of this is, so at the very beginning here, is kind of one of those, is a moment where you can tell we're in this apocalyptic literature where it says, let the reader understand. So it's when the abomination of desolation standing where it should not be, let the reader understand. And the abomination of desolation is a reference to the book of Daniel. And I believe that the way it was largely interpreted in its primary significance was um, Antiochus IV was um, um, an emperor, I believe. And not, I don't think he was, or maybe he was just a regional leader. But in any case, a very, very arrogant man. And one of the things that he did was he came in and he sacrificed a pig to Zeus on the altar in the temple in Jerusalem. Uh, so it was an unclean animal to a pagan god by a pagan emperor. It's a big, big deal. And it pushed people over the edge into revolution. And, uh, and we get the story that ultimately gives rise to Hanukkah. The purification of the temple after that is the story of, of Hanukkah. There's all kinds of interesting things that go along there. 
But so you have this idea, it's almost like, you know, when you see, it's almost like when you see the, you know, the, the, the Romans and you see the pagans coming in to march on uh, the temple, you know, which I believe also happened in about 70 AD, he says, watch out, get out of town when you can. Uh, hopefully it's not happening during the winter. Hopefully it's not happening when you're pregnant or nursing because uh, you got to get out of there quickly without much planning and with and you know, all the rest. So um, the point is, he says things are going to happen very quickly, and he says, you need to make sure that you're that we're very clear about the fact that you know someone's going to come along and say, you know, oh, the Messiah, the one who's going to save your people, the one who's gonna, is, is going to is going to is there. Is he be out in the fields? Go out and find this Messiah, and he'll lead you to military victory. Or the Messiah, the military victorious one, is going to be is in Jerusalem. Uh, come rally to him. Jesus is saying, don't don't do that because I'm the one who you need to be waiting for. Don't. And it's important information that Jesus is giving them because he's about to go die, you know. And he needs to. He's trying to remind people. He says, you know, it's when I die. It's almost as if Jesus is saying. When I go die, it's not that my mission has failed. It's part of the success of my mission. So don't think you need to go find somebody else. No, no, no. My death and resurrection is part of all of this. And so that when Jesus says, I'm telling you these things in advance, he's talking about, I told you this a couple of decades in advance. Uh, be aware of it within your lifetime. Um, and again, I'm not saying that there's not echoes of it in our lives today or in, and beyond, but we need to remember the fact that when Jesus says, I told you in advance, it's in advance for the people that Jesus is talking to. It's in the past for the readers of Mark's gospel. They've seen all of this happening. They know what he's talking about in the first instance. Whether it may have impact beyond that's a different thing. But it's a reminder that Jesus is saying, I knew this was coming. I told you about it. And Mark is going out of his way to remind us that Jesus saw this coming. And the things that are happening to us in this world are not outside the vision of God. And that when things happen to us that we go, where did all this come from? We can rest secure in the knowledge that Jesus knew it was coming and knew how to continue to be our Lord in the midst of all of that. Not always comforting. I mean, it is comforting in the midst of a very uncomfortable situation. And, uh, and it's important that we remember that in our uncomfortable situations. Well, that's all for today. Come back in tomorrow. We'll have one more day of daily Bible study in the Gospel of Mark. Have a good day.